As ever in Formula 1, the on-track battle for supremacy was augmented by the off-track arms race. Mercedes and Ferrari's design departments battled throughout the year to try and claim the upper hand, and although Ferrari promised much before the season began, Mercedes had 2019 in the bag once the music stopped. At the start of the year, Mercedes ran its new W10 in a beta spec during the first week of testing, while Ferrari began with its actual SF90. Although Ferrari looked best placed after week one in Barcelona, Mercedes brought a raft of new upgrades for the second week of testing to turn the tide. The nose had been tapered in to improve the airflow onto the cape section to improve the downforce at the front. Winglets had also been added either side of the S-duct outlet, helping to improve airflow over the chassis and direct some air down to the bargeboard section. There are also changes to the side pods, tightening them up to improve the passage of airflow over the top. Mercedes then added to its front wing design in China, changing the end plate to improve the outwash capabilities of the wing elements. Ferrari added new parts in Azerbaijan, however, sticking on a new set of turning vanes at the front of the bargeboards. This reconfigured the four sections to more aggressively turn airflow outwards. The corner of the floor also received three small fins to more aggressively shunt airflow outboard in conjunction with the diagonal slots in the floor. The Spanish Grand Prix, coinciding with the start of the European season, usually accompanies a large number of upgrades across the field. Aiming to stay ahead of the competition, Mercedes did just that reprofiling its front wing once more. Shortening the top flap slightly, the element below has had a small split introduced to it to strengthen the tip vortex produced at this area. This stops where the top element begins to satisfy the five elements rule. The barge boards also now featured a pair of boomerang wings, one underneath the other. This linked up with new turning vanes, featuring four distinct elements to minimize airflow separation. In its bid to close the gap to Mercedes, Ferrari also arrived in Spain with a few new parts reprofiling the end plate and also changing the foot plate next to it to add a small flick to the trailing edge. Ferrari had also tightened up the engine cover and had created a cutout in the fin at the rear to manage the airflow shed off the roll hoop section. But Ferrari still couldn't draw any closer to Mercedes and brought a new front wing design to the French Grand Prix to assess a new development path having lost momentum. The outboard section of the front wing had a different level of curvature aiming to boost the outwash effects. The end plates were also redesigned, featuring a rectangular cutout in the trailing edge, along with a new flow conditioner applied to the footplate to further boost that effect. The footplate had also been flattened at the rear to improve the flow passing over the top. There was also a change to the floor, and the turning vanes at the rear corner had been shifted further back, with two new banks of fins further forward. While those changes didn't provide an immediate surge up the order, it gave Ferrari enough confidence to move forward with them. But Mercedes crucially still had the advantage and continued its path with an upgrade for Germany, along with a special one-off livery to celebrate 125 years in motorsport. The top element of the front wing had been reconfigured and its trailing edge moved inwards to fit in with the bounds of the end plate. The turning vanes had also changed with a quartet of horizontal paces resembling Venetian blinds, which was brought in to channel airflow around the side pods. The mirrors also featured a more aerodynamically friendly shroud to try to reduce the drag that the mirrors produced. The rear wing end plate had also changed quite dramatically, adding a stepped cutout in the trailing edge corner to improve the wing's effectiveness. These upgrades certainly improved the W10, but also seemed to make its operating window a little bit narrower. Next time out in Hungary, Ferrari added new boomerangs, becoming the next team to join the trend, adding more dimension to its bargeboard package. But it was after the summer break when the team began to excel. And while the races in Belgium and Italy played to Ferrari's straight-line advantage, Singapore was an apparent turning point. Crucially, Ferrari made a number of changes to its SF90 to turn the tide at a circuit it was expected to struggle on, starting off with a brand new nose. By fitting a cape section onto the nose and extending that between the mounting pylons to create a pair of nostrils, Ferrari was able to generate more front-end downforce. Mercedes, meanwhile, hadn't brought any meaningful updates since the summer break. But for the Japanese Grand Prix, the team brought a brand new set of bargeboard turning vanes, along with a few minor detail pieces on the front wing. At the front, a new deflector was built into the end plate to help it turn airflow downwards, bringing it to the second deflector on the foot plate to push it around the front tyre. The front vertical piece on the turning vanes remained, but the central horizontal element had increased from 4 to 6, and no longer extended below the side pod mounted element as the previous specification did. While the side pod mounted vane was formerly made up of one piece, it was broken up now into two parts, presumably with the intention to generate tip vortices to wash over the side pods. 
As the season drew to a close and as Mercedes had already wrapped up both titles by the end of the US Grand Prix, the focus had already shifted towards Mercedes and Ferrari's respective 2020 machinery. And next year, the battle for victory will begin once more. Can Mercedes be beaten or can Ferrari get the upper hand?